All right, welcome back for part six. In this one, we're gonna be fixing our tile system because I'm kind of dumb, and I am realizing that I probably should have just started with a tile map node in the first place. I also made this checklist for what I want to have tutorials for by the end of the series. Here it is. Anything with a question mark is something I'm considering doing, but not sure if I want to do yet. Everything without one is something that is a need to have. Like I said, we're going to be switching over to a tile map system to render our individual tiles because it's more performant and it'll let us use an auto tile system in the future. Pay close attention, we're going to go through this as fast as we can. Very first thing we're going to do is change our cell data script. Instead of inheriting from resource, we're going to extend from object because we're just storing instance data in here. Remove the name and texture variables that we have so we're starting from scratch. First off, we're going to add some signals in this. We'll add cell changed and nav changed and pass a grid position through each of them. We'll attach these later in our grid script. Next, add these variables. Pause is the grid position of this cell, and the rest of these variables are going to use set gets because we want to emit a signal to refresh the cell on the tile map whenever they change. Occupy refers to whatever is currently taking up the space in the cell, whether that's a wall, a unit, a tree, etc. Floor data will be a new resource type that we'll be making to represent, you guessed it, floor data. The navigable variable is what our pathfinding code is going to check to see if it can use this cell to make a path. We also need to give cell data an init function, which is basically a constructor function that is called whenever you make a new cell data through code. Since cell data is an object and not a node, we can only make them through code. The init or initialize function will just take in a position and set our pause variable to that. Next, we need to create that floor data resource that we were just talking about, make a new script inheriting from resource, and name it floor data. Give it the class name floor data and the following variables. The name will be the name of the tile, like grass, dirt, stone, whatever. The ID and chords will be our source ID and atlas coordinates of the tile in the tile map, which you'll see once we get to our grid node. Next up, let's finally get some art into this project. I've taken some assets from Kenny's Urban RPG pack and bundled them together. You can find those files and a link to the pack as a whole in the description. I also want to make a small fix to our unit node. Open the unit scene and select the sprite node. Change the texture over to our colonist texture and open the offset menu. Untick centered. This way our colonist will actually be in the middle of our tiles rather than on the edges. Make sure to also move the collision shape over so that we can click on the colonist later. You might notice that your colonist is blurry, so select your sprite node, open the visibility menu, and change the filter setting to nearest. This is how you set sprites as pixel art in Godot 4. There's one other change I want to make to the unit. Open the unit data script and give both variables a default value. Then go to the script of our actual unit node, delete the speed variable here, and set the data variable to be a new unit data object like this. Go down to the process function and we'll get our unit speed from the data instead now. One other tiny change we need to make is that our colonists currently automatically assume that their starting position is 0, 0. Give them a ready function and in the ready function set their pause variable to be their current grid position. This way they'll know what tile they're starting on and their pathfinding won't get messed up. Now let's finally get to our grid node. Change the grid from a node 2D to a tile map and open up the script. Make it extend from tile map rather than node 2D. Let's go down to our generate grid function because we have to make some changes. Instead of setting the value of a grid space to null, we're going to set it to a new cell data. Our init takes in a position as a parameter, so set it to the position of the cell as a parameter like this. We also need to add a function to our grid script to refresh a specific cell. Create a function called refresh tile and give it a vector2 grid position as a parameter. Get the cell data at this position and store it in a variable called data, and then we can call the function set cell from our tile map node to set both layer 0 and layer 1 to the proper cell. Now we need to go and actually configure our tile set so that we have a layer 0 and a layer 1. Select your tile map, go over to the inspector, and click layers. Make the first layer layer 0, the floor, and the second, which is layer 1, as building. Also, set the z-index of the building layer to 1. Now we need to make our tiles. Create a new tile set and switch the tile size over to 128 by 128. Go to your tile set tab on the bottom of your screen on the tiles tab, and let's drag in our textures. Once each of the textures is in, go through each of them and create a new tile by clicking on it on the right side. Once you do that and hover over it, it'll bring up a pop-up that looks like this. The source ID and chords are what we're going to give to our floor data and building data objects. Now we'll actually make those floor data resources. Make a folder to store your data files in. In my file structure, it looks like this. Right-click on your data folder and go to Create New Resource. Choose the floor data resource type. 
If you don't see it in this list, go to the floor data script and make sure that you gave it a class name. This will create a new resource in the file system, and if you double click on it, it'll come up in the inspector. Now you can set the values of these to be the source ID and atlas coordinates that popped up in that little box on your tile set. Here's an example of my grass tile, which was source ID 1. Atlas cords for all of these are going to be 0, 0 since they're all single tiles. Now if we go back to our refresh tile function, you'll see that it's setting the tile on the floor layer to be whatever tile is specified by the floor data variable in the cells data. Now if we go back to our generate grid function, assign the grass resource that we created as the floor data, and then call our refresh tile function. We should see our actual grass tiles when we run the game. Plus, since we switched our unit to not be centered, it makes more sense which tile they're actually standing on and matches up with our tile map. And that's pretty much it for this one. In the next video, we're going to get to placing buildings like walls so we can actually see our pathfinding in action. So, see you next time.